programming made possible by Louisville MSD. Louisville MSD's vision is achieving safe, clean waterways through exceptional wastewater, drainage, and flood protection services for our community. Visit Bardstown.com. There's something beautiful about a small town. Hello there. Welcome. Well, Kelly. Kyle. From what I understand, we're going to talk about water we are, right now. We are. Not, not bourbon, not beers, not wine, but water, which is important. Which I would like to think is our best liquid asset. Because Louisville Water has been making water right here since 1860. Wow, 1860. You people didn't just kind of wait for it to rain and you know, uh, grab whatever was out there? Well, they did until that point. They did. It actually took a long time to get it because before you had Louisville Water, you just sunk a well and it was free, magically appeared. When we started pulling water from the Ohio River, we gave people a product that wasn't entirely perfectly clean, but it was certainly better than what they were getting from the well. And when you think about it, it's amazing that we did it at a place that looks like this. This does not look like a water utility. True, there is some giant object behind <laughs> us. It looks relatively old. It uh, is, it is. And, and significant. What, what is this behind sure. us? Sure, so this is the historic Louisville Water Tower. It's the oldest standing water tower of its kind in the United States. And the water tower and the building behind it have been here since 1860. We started with a pump station, a water tower and a reservoir to deliver water. Um, today, these are National Historic Landmarks, and so they're really important to the city's history. This is pretty different. It is. Now, so, we've seen those water towers, Florence Y'all, yeah. and you know, those things, and <laughs> they look no pretty much, this one. yeah, yeah. Lo totally different style than it what is, this thing is. is. So this is not a traditional water tower. It doesn't hold water. Inside the tower is actually um, a pipe. And the only purpose for this tower was to make sure the steam engines that were inside the white building didn't implode as we were pulling water from the Ohio River. So it didn't store water. It was really a surge protector more than anything else. So the, the original water tower had statues on it. There was a tornado that came through here in 1890, snapped the water tower at the base. Everything was snapped this? Snapped it at the base. Pictures are pretty that cool. That is a big tornado. That is a big tornado. Yeah. We lost all of the original statues except for two. We don't know what happened to those two. They're probably in someone's basement, I would guess. Sure. So we replaced the statues that you see today um, with nine Greek and Roman gods and goddesses and an Indian hunter and a dog. Um, the old annual reports tried to paint a very glowing picture of why we chose the Indian hunter and a dog. In essence, it's always a connection. Somebody knows somebody who has a connection. The water company didn't have a lot of money in 1890 after the tornado. So somebody knew someone with a garden ornamental co company and said, hey, I've got nine Greek and Roman gods and goddesses, an Indian hunter and his dog statues. I'll give them to you for $1,000, throw them on the water tower. And we said, hey, that's a great deal. Wow, okay, so what? What is this? It looks a little now? different, doesn't it? This is it? totally yeah. different. I mean, I was not expecting this. Right so in now. 1860, this is where the boilers were as part of our original operations. You had steam engines and boilers, and now it's the Waterworks Museum. So it, we're telling the story of Louisville's drinking water, but it's really a story of the city's history. There's a, what, we had a fire bucket. So we this got... is what you used before you had the Louisville Fire Department and before you had Louisville Water to fight a fire. There was actually a law on the books in Louisville that said if you made more than $40 in a year, two of these buckets had to be filled with water at all times for a bucket brigade. Charles Hermony, who was one of our first chief engineers, this is his handwritten diary of what it costs to build the Louisville Waterworks. So in 1860, um, $829,000 to build this pump station, the water tower, and an original reservoir. Um, Holy cow. And it's down to the penny, 81 cents. And 81 cents. You probably can't buy a house in Louisville for that much <laughs> in some places, I think. Yeah, That's, yeah. Wow. Um, so in 1860, if Kyle, you wanted water from the Louisville Water Company, we would come to your beautiful log cabin. We would look at you and say, tell us about your cabin. You know, do you want a faucet? 
do you have a cow? Because that's going to be an extra dollar. Sure. Yeah, and you and, need to have a cow. Yeah, and do you have a horse-drawn carriage? I'm, I'm looking at one. Well, I'm going to have to charge you an extra dollar for that. I may so skip the, it then. So, so the assessor would look at you and he would say, Kyle, you owe me $6 a year for water. We actually had a tariff. This is a copy of the tariff. So this is how we charged you. There you can see a cow is a dollar. But one of our most popular customers in the 1800s were street sprinklers. And you know, because we're such an old water system going back to 1860, we have a lot of old pipes in the ground. So the pipe that you see behind me is one of our original 1860 cast iron water mains. Holy cow. Gigantic, isn't it? That's a big pipe. That's a big pipe. The race for pure water. What was the race? I don't, races really? I think of the Derby <laughs> when I think of Louisville. Well, it really was a race. When we started in 1860, all we did was take the mud out, send it to your house. You had to let, you had to let the cup sit so the mud went to the bottom and you drank it really, really fast. So a few years after we started, suddenly we had microscopes, we had the germ theory, and a man named George Warren Fuller said, hey, I think maybe we need filters to give us pure water. So right here in the late 1800s, Louisville Water did a set of experiments that led to modern day water treatment that used filters. So we found that if we could filter that Ohio River water, we could actually take out 99% of the bacteria, all of the mud, a few years later, we start to add chlorine, and suddenly, Louisville has a very pure supply of water. So, Kelly, you know, I noticed in these old pictures a lot of really cool hats that people <laughs> wore back then. That's, uh, that's something to... Uh, you were hip before you, know, you knew it. I, I like it. I'm, I'm really digging the hats. Okay, so Kelly, we're inching closer and closer to the Ohio River. We are. So I'm looking, I don't see any pumps. Where's this pump thing that you're talking about? Why? Well, you're actually standing on one. Yeah, this is a pump. This is the pump? Well, the pump that we used to use at Louisville Water, you have pumps here that are pushing water from the Ohio River. Those are electric. But this is a steam engine pump. There are three levels here. Three levels. When this particular pumping station opened in 1917, you had this steam engine and another one in this building pushing water that was coming from the Ohio River. Wow. Yeah. You need the power of a pump to push the water from the pumping station to the reservoir. We're pulling in from the Ohio, which is the highest. We, can we go check out where that's I, I'm going to finally let you see the source for Louisville's drinking water. How about that? Well, I'm holding on for dear life because I'm about 45 feet above the Ohio River, right next to our intake tower where Louisville Water is pulling in about 100 to 110 million gallons of water a day. So I think we're about, what, five miles upstream from the city of Louisville, and that's why this site was chosen because we are upstream, you know, versus uh, downstream and pulling in the pollution from the city. During the 37 flood, uh, like two thirds of the city was flooded. It was a lot of the west end a lot of the downtown area was flooded and uh, the people who were there had to evacuate their houses and move into the highlands back in 37 they were given the abandoned pumping station because with no electricity no steam there was no way to pump water and the water was just about at the floor level of the pumping station and it was still rising Louisville had about six to ten days worth of water left in the reservoir and we went on a uh, two-hour rationing two-hour day rationing of water and then uh, LS Vance our chief engineer came up with the idea of using a steamboat to work one of the steam pumps. They gathered the men at the Crescent Hill Reservoir, got down through the flooded streets of the city of Louisville, got a steamboat, a CC slider, and a barge full of coal. They steamed up the flooded Ohio River, docked outside pump station number two, made the steam connection between the steam boiler of the steamboat to one of our steam pumps, and by seven o'clock that night, we were able to get water into the Crescent Hill Reservoir, preventing Louisville from running out of water. Programming made possible by Louisville MSD. Louisville MSD's vision is achieving safe, clean waterways through exceptional wastewater, drainage, and flood protection services for our community. Visit Bardstown.com. There's something beautiful about a small town.